Fear is a force so powerful it can test our will to the limits and forever change the course of our lives. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of desperate moments that inspire exceptional acts of rescue. 911. We begin on June 21st, 1991 in California's San Diego Bay as Hans Kopfer, his wife Cheryl, and their two children were heading out to sea for the first time on a boat they had recently purchased. Their daughter, Rhea, was seven years old. I was excited, real excited. So how was the concert? I didn't think anything bad was going to happen. I just thought we were going to have a party and have fun. <laughs> We were cruising. We were at about five knots. I felt that, that on the starboard engine was dragging a little bit. As some seaweed got caught in the prop. I disengaged the gears and had the engine idling and then sent Brian down on the swim step to, to rip it loose. Be careful, Brian. Got it, Brian? Yeah. Okay. Right. Right, come on. Brian and Rhea, they came back up on top. Cheryl was still standing in the back of the boat. All right. Hang oh, on. Let me go. Ah! Jump, Brian, jump! Cheryl went straight up in the air, about 30, 35 feet, and then came straight back down again. The legs were in the engine compartment. The right leg was stuck. The left one was burning. And I couldn't pull her loose. And all I could think is, let's make sure that the kids are safe. I was so scared. There's fire all around her. I was afraid that I'd never see my mom again. When an explosion ripped open the back of the boat that Hans Koffer and his family were on, his two children managed to escape the fire by going overboard. Though the boat was in flames, Hans remained on board to try and free his wife, Cheryl, whose leg was pinned in the engine. The fuel tanks were completely full, and they're sitting right next to the fire. Any second today could explode. Cheryl started to scream, just get off, just get off but I would not leave her there. Go! Go! No, go! Go! Once I touched her lower leg, I knew that she has a, a major, major fracture and the leg wouldn't move. It was cold, but at that point I couldn't feel anything. And I swam a little bit, but I was so scared that I just started to stop swimming and I just hung on to my brother's feet. It seemed like forever, swimming in the water and just trying to get away from the boat. And finally, it seemed just like out of nowhere, a boat came up. It was a relief to find that someone finally picked us up, and then I kept on thinking about where's Cheryl, where's Hans. And the only thing we could see is the big flames and smoke all over. And we could hear in the distance Cheryl screaming. It was, it was pretty bad. Rhea just held me really hot tight and nothing there's really nothing we could do except for just listen to it i had a metal saw and being a doctor i was fully capable of cutting her leg off had i to do it so i just decided one more choice i give it then i cut I ripped her pants off, but I couldn't get it over the leg. I had one more fire extinguisher available, but it didn't do absolutely nothing. The back was totally engulfed in flames. The only way for us to get out was through the window. It was very crucial to get off very fast. 
any second the fuel tanks could explode. Sure, and I did not have life vest on. And I'm not a very good swimmer. It was very cold and I got cramps pretty bad. But I told Sure several times to, to scream, just scream like Merlin. My main concern was if she would get unconscious, there's no way with my swimming ability to keep her afloat. After about five minutes, I was about ready to quit. And then I saw this big sailboat there. Once we got to the boat and realized the monstrous size of it, I knew there was absolutely no way to get onto the sailboat. So we were depending on some other source of rescue. I could see my dad was hanging on to the ladder with one arm, and the other arm he was hanging on my mother. And he would just look so scared. William Bowman, a gunner's mate in the Navy, and two petty officers had seen the explosion from a nearby base and went to help. Once we realized that there were injured people in the water, we pulled alongside. Our first thought was to get him some help as quick as we could. We noticed that she has bad burns. The only thing that we could do was keep them moist. I mean, all we had was salt water and it was the only way of keeping her somewhat comfortable. We require medical assistance for We're en route. We need medical assistance. We have plans for if somebody gets hurt, places we go. We started heading to the Dixon, USS Dixon. Harbor Police Patrol Officer Larry Lieber and his partner spotted the fire and picked up the children to take them to shore. Both of the children were soaking wet. I went down below, got emergency blankets, wrapped them up in them, and then just started talking to them about anything I could think of. The little girl just wouldn't calm down at all. She just wanted to be with her parents, and she was starting to break my heart. At the USS Dixon, a Navy medical team was awaiting Cheryl's arrival, including hospital corpsman Bernard Shaw. Okay, well. She had burns more badly than we expected. The right lower leg was broken and it needed to be splinted right away. The lower back was blisters. Some blisters had popped and exposed the tender area of the skin tissue. She was in deep pain. My heart was out to her. Hans met up with the children at the dock. When I saw the kids, it was an unbelievable relief because up until this point, we didn't know where they were or what happened to them. That's when I started crying. It was just a big sign of relief just to know that he was okay. I felt much better that I had my brother and my dad, and I could see my mom. I heard her calling for me and my brother, and I just felt she really loved me and my brother. While Hans stayed with the children, Cheryl was taken to a Coast Guard pier for transport to a nearby hospital. She was very uncomfortable. I kept telling her, we're almost there, we're almost there. It's very important that she just hang on. We all lifted her into the stretcher, and at that time I said goodbye to her. I said, I hope you feel better, and that was the last I saw her. At the UCSD Medical Center, Cheryl was examined by Dr. John Hansborough. Chief of the Burn Service. How's the pulse down there, Jeff? The burns was covered about half of her leg. They were entirely around the leg. They were very deep. They're what we call third degree. Third degree burns, particularly the leg, tend to get infected very quickly. But the biggest concern when Cheryl came in was really the fracture of the leg. This fracture is in an area which can tear the artery, which could result in actual loss of the leg. Mm. I'm going to come in later. When I saw my mom in the hospital, she looked like a sad little puppy, and she just said, hi. I told my mom I loved her. Hi, Andrew. Cheryl returned to work as a nurse manager at a local hospital after four operations to repair her crushed leg and a year of intense rehabilitation. I admire her strengths. I think it's uh, 
very few people who would be as strong as she was through, through the whole thing. I'm very proud of it. It was hard work and well. Took a lot of support from other individuals. My husband, you know, that's, you know, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay, he'd say. I think my dad's a hero for saving my mom's life. And the Navy guys, they mean a lot to her because they saved her. So Let me give you a hug, sure. These gentlemen went far beyond the call of duty. I don't think there's any way possible I can repay them. Just say thank you. I'm just glad she's okay. Uh, that's the biggest thing for me. But this never would have happened unless there was a team effort. All the training had paid off. An investigation of the accident revealed that the explosion was caused by a gas leak in the engine, which had recently been overhauled. I love my family dearly. I'm very thankful to be here just to spend what time we have here together. It's pretty overwhelming to know that my husband would risk his life, be willing to go with me if that's what it took. I know Hans loves me beyond belief.